Normally, when you fire a portal, there is a little bit of recoil. But when you're standing in front of a portal, there is no recoil whatsoever. In Chamber 19, there is a small invisible wall that follows the button as it moves up and down. Not only can you use this to launch yourself pretty high in the air, but crouching under it prevents the button from activating the door at all. Another fact about this button is that normally when you press the button, the door will move up quickly and move back down very slowly. However, if you spam the button, the door will move up quickly and move back down just as fast. There are numerous areas in the game where radios spawn floating or inside of a surface. You probably already know that the advanced portion of 17 is still present in the regular version of 17. But did you know that the observation rooms in this area are a remnant of beta observation rooms that contain Half-Life 2 assets, as well as some observation rooms that are totally empty? Another fact about this area is that if you look really closely at the reflections, you may notice that you can actually see things that are out of bounds. This is because the position that would normally be used to draw this reflection is in this hallway that gets removed in Advanced Chamber 17. Did you know that in the map files, there is no Test Chamber underscore A underscore 12? It skips straight from Test Chamber A11 to Test Chamber A13. This probably implies that there was a map that was removed late in development. When the player dies, a ragdoll is created that actually has collision with the environment. However, it normally appears invisible to the player without commands. If you go to the bottom of the elevator shaft in Chamber 6, you can see that it is the only map to have a metal wall where an untextured portable surface would normally be. In the first of the three escape maps, there are a number of places where you can see pistons clipping through walls. In this same map, there is a J made out of handprints in the same room as the radio. This is probably a signature left by Jeff Lane, one of the primary mappers for Portal. During the last section of Chamber 19, you can actually shoot a portal on this extremely slim portion of this normally unreachable white room. In Escape 01, there is a beta line of dialogue that is supposed to play when you enter this small turret ambush room. Okay. I am going to kill you now. Even though this audio file is removed from all versions of the game, the game still has the trigger that plays the voice line, printing an error into the console. In Chamber 19 and Escape 00, there are pools of normally unreachable toxic goo that actually do no damage to the player. By completing the final room of Chamber 18 Advanced and lowering all of the platforms, you can actually place a portal on the fully lowered platforms, making this the only area in the game that you can place a portal under the goo. If you stand underneath the corner of this platform in Chamber 15, it can actually push you into the ground. This is due to a poorly sized anti softlock trigger that is supposed to raise the platform when touched. This trigger is fixed for all other rising platforms in the game. This door in Chamber 14 is protected by an anti softlock trigger which causes the door to break and explode by relocating the cube anywhere once it has activated the button. By activating the trigger and standing in this specific spot next to the door, the explosion actually does a small amount of damage to the player. Did you know that you can shoot backwards into this black room in Escape 00, and with either some props or a difficult fling, you can actually activate the load trigger to take you back to Chamber 19. In every map, there are invisible boxes out of bounds that contain NPCs that look like cubes. These NPCs actually function as actors that play Gladys' voice lines. Deleting one while Gladys is talking can cause her to suddenly go silent. When you suddenly move a prop very quickly while holding it, it should maintain the direction it is facing. However, if you do this while in front of a portal hitbox, the rotation of the object will actually fail to correct itself. In the parking lot of the last map of the game, you may know that there is a radio out of bounds that bleeds when shot. This is yet another actor that plays the audio for the ending cutscene, and is actually nicknamed Tim Larkin as a reference to a composer and sound designer for the game. 
During the escapes, there are a number of gates with padlocks on them that can actually be broken by jumping on them. However, despite the broken locks, you still cannot actually open the gates. When playing through the game normally, the elevator doors for chambers 14 and 19 will appear to have no collision. This is because the collision is stuck at the bottom of the elevator shaft from the previous level transition. This does not occur when loading the map from a new game. Here's a quick camera fact speed round. Did you know there are 49 cameras in the game, with Chamber 17 having the most at a whopping 10 cameras? Cameras that are attached to walls have to be explicitly told to fall off when a portal is placed behind it with a funk portal detector. Cameras placed on metal walls don't have this trigger, and will not fall off when a portal is placed behind them. Cameras that are shot off a wall cannot interact with a gravity gun. However, the loose cameras in 17 can. This is because wall cameras are not considered a prop, and are actually considered an NPC, unlike the loose cameras in 17. The loose cameras in 17 are actually flipped and upside down compared to the wall cameras. If you take a close look at the collision of the wall cameras, you'll notice that the collision is actually flipped. This is not the case for the loose cameras in 17. Due to the extremely odd bounding box position of the wall cameras, the player isn't able to correctly collide with them. This can cause odd behaviors like making them extremely easy to clip into, really weird sudden deaths, and gaining speed, which can be heavily abused in speedruns. What? Uh, guys? Despite the cameras turning to look at you, their collision remains in the same position at all times. There is actually supposed to be a dialogue line that plays when you shoot the last camera off the wall for the camera shy achievement. At the Enrichment Center, we promise never to value your safety above your unique ideas and creativity. However, do not destroy vital testing apparatus. However, most people won't hear the sound play because it only plays if GLaDOS is not talking during any of the times that you shoot a camera off a wall. For more information, make sure to go check out Marbler's video that goes into detail about how this actually happens. This marks the end of the camera speed round. Back to the facts. Weird sudden deaths when inside of a portal hitbox, such as the weird sudden camera deaths, are actually caused by a function called find closest passable space failing. Because the game is unable to find a place to put the player, it deals 10 billion damage to the player. This type of death can be activated in a number of different ways. To learn more about this, make sure to check out this in-depth video by Uncrafted Name. If you have enough speed, you can pass through surfaces when exiting a portal's hitbox because the game is not able to update the player's collision fast enough. These cube dropper parts in Chamber 19 can actually be used to activate this button. There are multiple parts in the game where the underside of these metal wall tiles are untextured. Did you know that in Chamber 16, every turret is able to activate this button at the end of the chamber, except for this turret at the very start of the map? This is because this first turret is named Training underscore Turret, while every other turret in this map has the name Box. Other than the name, there are no other differences between this turret and the rest of the ones in Chamber 16. If you look at the menu background closely, you'll notice that there is what looks to be an IV stand next to the bed. If I use the command and remove info target, we can actually explore this and other background maps to see that you can actually pick up this IV stand. In chamber 9, if you place a cube into this ending hallway and go back to the start of the chamber, the cube gets deleted and a new one is spawned as a way to prevent soft locking. This trigger can also be activated in some other ways that may look confusing to new players. Just like the cameras, the rocket turrets also have a totally stationary collision, despite how much they move around. In Chamber 15, you can get inside of this little platform dispenser. Upon entering Gladys' room, a massive trigger gets activated that deletes all NPCs, pushables, and physics objects outside of Gladys' chamber. 
Bringing one of the cores outside of this room will result in it getting deleted, soft locking the game. Dying outside of Gladys' room while the game is in this state will cause the game to crash because it is actually attempting to delete the dead player. In Chamber 19, there is actually an invisible platform that pushes you up through this pipe. You can use a prop to get this platform stuck, which will cause a soft lock if you try to re-enter the pipe. Did you know that the largest entity in the game in terms of collision is the upper half of Gladys' body? It's actually larger than the entirety of the first map of the game, and is almost as tall as Chamber 18's ending room. Sometimes when loading into Chamber 4, you can hear the softlock dialogue start playing. You're not a good person. You know that, right? Only to find out that this door in Chamber 5 has already been opened. This is commonly known in the speedrunning community as Ghost Door, and is extremely rare. The working theory for why this actually happens is that for a brief moment, the softlock trigger doesn't filter out what is and isn't allowed to activate it, leading to it getting triggered by this radio that sits in the last room, thus opening the door. There are a few areas throughout the game that let you place a portal on a surface you're not supposed to, such as these gratings in Chamber 8 and Chamber 13, this platform in Chamber 11, and this window in Chamber 13. Chamber 18 Advanced is the only map in the game that contains this weird old radio with no light. This is actually left over from the initial release of the game that contained no radios other than that at the start of the game and at this same spot in Chamber 18. This is also the only advanced chamber to have a radio in it. In most of the chambers, you are actually able to shoot a portal through a very small hole underneath the elevator. This trick can be used to backtrack at some maps that contain more than one chamber. In each map with an elevator, there is a level transition trigger that changes the map when the elevator reaches the top of the shaft. Normally, this cannot be activated in any other way than waiting for the elevator. However, in Chamber 10, the developers accidentally left the Disable Touch trigger unchecked, letting the player end the level early with some tricky movement. There are multiple areas in the game that allow you to place a portal for only 0.1 seconds before getting fizzled. This is because the game only checks every 0.1 seconds to see if the surface that a portal is on is actually a valid surface. If you're a speedrunner, then you may know that runners often use specific builds of the game to optimize their gameplay. For instance, many prefer build 5135 for its use in making certain glitches significantly easier while build 3420 allows them to freely maneuver out of bounds for a trick that shaves off almost 20 seconds. However, because 3420 was released before the transmission received achievement, a lot of the radios scattered throughout the game have been removed. The solution to this problem? Build 4104. Rumored to offer both unrestricted out of bounds movement and all the necessary radios, this version was first released March 1st, 2010 and was the first release of the game that included the new ending cutscene and the transmission received achievement. Evidence of this build is only present in YouTube videos over a decade old. If a download of this build is ever found, it could potentially shave off two minutes from 100% speedruns, and a few seconds from out-of-bound speedruns. Special thanks to Uncrafted and the Portal Discord for helping me in clarifying a lot of the facts in this video. Hey, if you learned something new from this video, make sure to subscribe, because there were actually quite a few facts that didn't make it onto this list, so I might have to make another one of these videos in the future. Either way, if you made it this far, thank you for watching.